Okay, and it seems we are live. If the audience can hear me and see me, please acknowledge with your comments. Are you able to see me? Any confirmation? Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for that for confirming that. Well, welcome to the first episode of the big testing debate. And today, debating on the subjects of testing on the various questions that I have for them are two friends, two really close friends of mine, and they are close friends of each other. And it gives me great pleasure in welcoming two of the most wonderful testers, Santosh and Ajay. So, in the red corner is wearing a very nice pair of very new headphones, sitting on a very nice uh, chair, showing his thumb to us, is my dear friend Santosh Tupar. He needs no introduction. He is probably one of the finest uh, security testers, uh, software testers, um, somebody who's very vocal, somebody who likes to talk his heart out. Uh, uh, just a wonderful person. I can't, I, if I go on describing him, I think the show will be over. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, and in the blue corner, I have my other friend, <laughs> Showing his muscles, flexing his muscles now, is author, teacher, mentor, guru. I, f I fall short of words for him, uh, Ajay Balamurugadas. Two great friends. Welcome to both of you to the show. Santosh and Ajay, welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, okay. So we see that uh, there are a good audience already. To the audience, please uh, keep firing your comments and your questions. We will take your questions as well. To begin with uh, this debate, I have a question for both of you. So um, I have a feeling, this is my personal feeling, and there are a few others who also across the industry who feel this way, that uh, software testing is in a bad shape. Do you agree? Ajay, would you like to go first? Oh, yes. Uh, people are not even thinking of software testing. Uh, if people thought of software testing, then uh, we all would be in a better shape. Uh, we would not even need this debate. Uh, people confuse uh, one activity or maybe two, three activities with the entire landscape of testing, and that's a big problem. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, this is not new. This is not new. Even if this debate would have had uh, would have happened maybe 15 years ago, that's like when I started, we would have still answered the same. We would still have got the same question. Uh, I think uh, Santosh would uh, disagree, but uh, that's fine. Uh, right? So because uh, he did not start 15 years ago, he started way before that or way after that. So, yeah, I mean, testing is in a bad shape because we don't understand testing. And is uh, any different, is testing now any different from the last 15 years? Uh, a lot, but then the testers are not improving, which is constant. Okay. Santosh, what's your take? Well, <clears throat> So in the last decade, okay, it was the same thing. And even now it's the same thing. And only these new things like the new frameworks, the technologies which testers are adopting and adapting to that, only that, that's what I'm saying. But the thinking, uh, I, I don't see it, okay. Uh, mainly when I ask questions to testers, they are still the same people. And that's why my workshops keep running, right? 
because they are still there. And I did not even update my workshops or whatever I would like to uh, create. Well, that's a good thing for me, all right? So as I need not waste my time uh, or, uh, to create a new content, and they're still there, because I kept trying uh, to uh, inject certain thing uh, into the testers' mind, but it, I gave up, all right? I, the reason I gave up is not because I was demotivated, but I was not motivated by the people because when they come to a workshop or a conference, it's just that to add that in their CV or profile and they are done. They will speak to you because, oh, well, I spoke to James Bach or Michael Bolton. Well, I would like to make myself famous here as well. I spoke to Santosh Tupad, I spoke to Ajay, I spoke to Brijesh, or I spoke to other people in the industry. Well, until that changes, uh, we need to probably worship ourselves and that can happen only when we strive harder uh, towards okay learning. Uh, it could be anything and people don't learn nowadays. That's what I feel. It's, it's nine to five job, okay, it's done. And then, okay, they are bombarded with the other thoughts in their brain and they are like, okay, what new technology should I learn? Well, first of all, you haven't finished the one which you have picked up and now you are already thinking of, okay, let me follow that part now. So until then, I don't think so, okay, something changes. To me, uh, call me a pessimist, but I still don't see that people would change. Many people would call me, okay, he's such a bad person that he who is demotivating testers to not learn. But actually, uh, I'm pulling your legs here, all right? so that you go ahead, at least you feel uh, a bit itched, saying that, okay, I need to go back. And, and you have so much of data on the web. That's the best thing that happened to the humanity, right? So when people can just go and read the documentation, no one reads the documentation because it's all about, uh, I never understand this part. Okay, I'm sorry to cut it off. I don't understand this. People are so busy and I don't understand how. And why? And what are we doing with that busy time? Is it that reading? Is it, are you are writing? Are you reading the RFC documentation? And many people think this, because I saw this on LinkedIn recently. Someone posted about uh, uh, repeat, repeating your tests to confirm the bug, all right? But no one spoke about logging tests, right? Why is, that, why is it that only developers log and then they look into the log files? Why don't we have the test logs? Why can't someone write their own test logs and, and, and uh, look into them saying that, okay, hey, look, okay, I clicked on this button, okay, if they did a UI-based automation or even UI-based uh, testing, all right? Now that, that can be easy, okay? If you look into the web browser and then you can write your own JavaScript and then, okay, it keeps logging in your console whenever you click, and it even records your uh, whatever selector names, like the ID names and everything. Now you cannot say, I did something else apart from what I did before when I saw the bug. Now, if I don't get the same bug again, even after following the logs, it just means that, okay, probably it could be a time interval based bug, but we don't do that. We always say it's an intermittent bug and we close it because we are always good at closing things, right? So, uh, and that makes us feel happy that, okay, now out of the checklist, one checklist has, is gone. I mean, one, sorry, one stick note is gone probably. <laughs> so there are no intermittent bugs. It, it, there are only people who are not really passionate about finding certain thing which can help you where something went wrong. And the managers are going to say, hey, look, okay, we don't have time. Then the testers are, testers are also going to say, okay, intermittent bug, right? So it's a win-win situation for the manager and the tester, but no one is passionate here. You, either, I mean, the manager and the tester, they like, okay, it's like, uh, okay, the clock is ticking. Okay, I'm done. Okay, I'm not really motivated. But the paycheck is coming at the end of the month. 
So nothing had changed. That's a summary. Okay, I keep going on and on on this part. So uh, I no, think well, I'll give you a live uh, live test. I'll give you a live test. We have so many audience. I mean, so many testers attending this session. Right? How many of them are making notes? You know, right? We can have a yes or no coming out. If you see more no's coming out of the yes compared to the yes, you know, it's the same. Like ten years, fifteen years ago. No one was taking notes. Here also, no one is taking notes. If we are getting more people to, you know, get rid of the bad habits, then we can. We have hope. Then right. we have hope. Right now, yeah. Uh, it is. Is it bad? Yes. Is it worse than before? No, because it's same. Uh, right. Um, will it be worse? Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, it could go bad. Right. So. Uh, there is a question uh, in the comments, but then again, yeah. I'll leave it so there was a, there was this question in the comments. I'll put it up again. I'll highlight that again. And this is from Rakesh, and Rakesh is asking: Is it only others to be blamed for the bad shape of testing, or testers are the culprits for this? So are we to be blamed, or is it somebody else who puts the blame here? For what? I mean, who? Uh, for who the bad shape of testing. Others? For the who, bad shape of testing, who is this? Others, others is uh, probably I don't know if Rakesh may clarify. I think it is the non testing managers or the developers or the, the everybody else other than the testers. Okay, let's let's put it that way. Okay, I'll go ahead for this. I think please there should not be a blame game in the first place. So Good. why are we saying that, okay, we need to blame this person or this person, wherever there is a blame, there is no growth at all. We see that happening and people blame this person, they point fingers at the other person. You get way too comfortable blaming others. And what's happening in the background is, or the backstage, you are affecting yourself. Right. You are not learning. You're not making any progress by blaming others. For, for, for instance, uh, if I keep blaming others or maybe I can learn something new, that's the question I would ask myself. And probably, not probably, I'm very sure that Ajay would also do the same thing. Okay. <laughs> so, so that's why I think, okay, there is no blame game as long as there is uh, learning and also teaching others rather than saying, okay, I know everything or I know it all that, Ikea version. So when that gets into my head, it's hard for other people to say something which will get into my brain. I would always reject things. There's a kind of an ego that gets in. Yeah. So no blame game, zero blame game is what I would say. So right. he clarifies saying devs, POs, higher management, architect, uh, they are not in Mars. You, if you are on Earth, you are in the same place where they are there. Talk to them. Educate them. When was the last time we read their testing book? You know, it, it gets boring in debates like this. You repeat the same lines again and again and again and again. Because things are not changing. And why are they not changing? Because they don't feel the pain. Even if they don't do anything, any uh, change in their habits, they get their next job because some testing manager hires to fill the places, not hires the brains or hires a super skilled tester. Uh, someone else is paying. You get salary. You have a job. If you don't like this job, you can go to the next job. You don't like that job. You can again put on LinkedIn. You can put, I mean, you get uh, opportunities. You get that 20%, 30% whatever hike. So you're doing it for money, right? The passion is missing. If the passion is missing, as Jerry says, right? If uh, quality is not your goal, anything you do is okay, right? Yeah. So in same way, if you are not passionate, which might not be true because you are already attending test chats, this debate, so you know you should have some percent of passion is whatever. If those who are not passionate, for them it's like you know. What I mean, testing industry is bad, good. How, what, how does it matter to me? I get my salary, I get my weekend, I get my offs, 
I get my next job. Who are these two guys? Who is that guy who is doing every tester speak every you know? Does he think he is in a you know Arnab Goswami or what? How does it matter to me? right? Well, yeah. Uh, th- thank you for reminding me of uh, AG. Uh, in this debate, I don't want to be AG and uh, <laughs> and not let you both speak. So <laughs> I'm trying really hard to control my instincts. But then uh, this was this was this was gold. I think uh, I'll just put in my my one cent here, not even two cents. That you know, uh, the basic thing that I personally find missing. And uh, this is where I feel that it is us who take should take the responsibility for this. Is the the drive, the passion that you guys spoke about, to uh, you know uh, make sure that we are doing something better today than what we did yesterday? How are we the better version of ourselves than compared to yesterday? What is it that I have learned today that makes me a better tester compared to what I was today, tomorrow, or yesterday. I mean, these are some of the questions we don't ask. I have not seen people talking about these at all. Okay. Anyways, moving on uh, the next question, and this is uh, really, really something that 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 drives me crazy. I, I'll see if that drives you crazy as well. The automation rat race. Everybody wants to automate. Every single person you talk to, even on the street, they will talk about automation. Okay. What is going on, Ajay? What is happening? Uh, I I remember uh, Lagan movie's uh, first scenes where... Uh, or the match first scene where every player runs behind the ball, right? And then Amir Khan says, "Yar, sab log kyun bhag rahe? Right? Ball kisi ke paas gaya, toh fielder karega na? Why are why is everyone running behind? It? See, when people don't know about the 20 to 30 opportunities, they will focus on one of the activities, right? I will tell you all the places or some of the places where automation can be applied." And then I'll tell you what's happening now. Yeah. Analyzing requirements. You could use automation there also. Okay. Yes. Many people don't do that. Yeah. Modeling the entire product. Analyzing through an entire site map. Yeah. You can apply automation there also. Yes. Uh, you could ask a lot of questions. You could collate answers. Uh, make something like an heat map out of the answers, uh, how many times the frequency of words, all of that you could use automation, right? So questioning, then uh, uh, clarifying assumptions also you could use automation. Like, okay, we asked these questions, we got this answer at this time, now we are getting this, what has changed? You could use automation there also. Uh, You could use automation to create test data also, okay? You could use automation to uh, perform long running tests as well. How many time? How many weekends are we wasting by not running the tests? You know, use automation to run the tests for some experiment for a specific test rather than just for test execution. There is a difference. Now, people instead of using automation for multiple activities, they are focusing on only one activity, and that is called as test execution. Because somehow, somewhere, people have forgotten the meaning of automation. What is automation? Primarily using tools, doing it faster than humans. It never says automation equal to test automation or execution automation. Automation can be for anything. You could use automation for monitoring. You could use automation for test data generation. You could use automation for collating. But no, sare filter ek ball ke piche, so I will also run behind test execution and test automation. So, right, the problem is within us because uh, we testers don't talk about this. And as we don't talk about this, this doesn't get asked in the interviews. When this doesn't get asked in the interviews, we keep asking, oh, which tool do you know? Which framework? 
explain your automation framework and then you know you prepare for it a youtube video gets created for the answer you follow that you know it's a cycle is it a rat race uh, yes rat race monkey race all kinds of races <laughs> santosh smiling <laughs> oh yes uh, i'm 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 kind of lost or i'm totally lost with this uh, topic itself uh, there are so many thoughts over this subject uh, first of all i don't it's a race where there is no winner all right so automation if it's a rat race okay there is no race it's just an assumption that we have put that in our head oh that's a competition but we call it as a rat race in a sarcastic way with hashtag sarcasm but we don't know where we are going with the automation do we know why we are automating is the question that everyone needs to ask and how much of a uh, knowledge you need to have even let's say okay if you want to automate something how much knowledge do you have to inject inside your automation code for i mean i have been using this example for a long time now now uh, automation is faster right now i'm not comparing them with the humans it's the humans made a car now with the acceleration and everything okay it goes keeps going faster but whether it meets with an accident or not it's up to the driver and most mostly i keep seeing the accidents with this automation the reason is uh, people have this hat okay which comes with i'm an automation tester i'm an automation engineer of course the designations keep changing because they feel good to add their uh, add them on their linkedin profile Well, but we'll take one from me is, Antosh. Yeah, sure take yeah. one from me full stack qa uh, a designation you're talking about designations for automation take this from me yeah uh, thank you full stack qa i don't know man okay i want to become that someday yeah <laughs> uh so so what i what i'm saying is for instance if you do not know how things work how many people know okay you could take a screenshot from the web browser itself you don't need a add ons or anything now what is that thing it's a automation because the browser itself has it inbuilt all right and many people go out because it's great to feel that add ons are great tools are great but if i go to develop a tools all right and then i go to more tools and then it opens the elements okay for security console application where you can look into the session management and all those things but the problem is we are very much comfortable looking at what's on the ui only but if you press your uh, control shift p or command shift p on mac all right so that opens a a, a kind of uh, a lot a lot a lot of different options where you can dig deeper and there you can take the node screenshots as well rather than taking yeah. something and putting in uh, microsoft paint or uh, taking a screenshot from greenshot i mean i like that it's it's very much rhyming words right screenshot greenshot yeah so <laughs> we are running behind tools without understanding we already have it in our home why are we liking what others have in their home and running behind what they do so automation will i mean it's, it's just like i mean i don't see a great fascination in automation at all so i automate wherever required if it's necessary based on the context if i have more time and there's a value that automation can add then i will automate if i have i can i don't want to okay i will not based on the timeline and everything but people are running behind it saying okay uh, what automation engineer are you man first of all you need to think that you are a human who has a brain all right if you do not see you your, if you cannot appreciate yourself then forget about changing the world right i mean change yourself and then the way you read and then uh, the way you write and also digging deeper in the subject how many people read books okay they buy the books because it's lovely to say on social media saying i got this book with a picture and then you get so many likes it's all the likability what we are seeing nowadays and 
And it also comes from the personal side as well because people are so disturbed in their personal lives is what I feel. So where they cannot focus on, uh, everyone says concentrate, Santosh, concentrate, focus, Santosh. Come on, you've got to focus. But no one tells me how to do it, okay? They say, I mean, everyone says, you got to be serious. Come on, you got to be serious, Brijesh, all right? But what do you mean <laughs> when you say serious? Because if I consider my schooling, the serious means, okay, don't even talk, all right? So if someone tells me, Santosh, become serious, okay, as a tester, then I, I won't even talk to them. Oh, well, you told me to be serious. But then my father told me, have discipline. Now, no one told me, okay, how to be disciplined or how to be serious. But we need to start demonstrating the value and how to do it as well, rather than just running behind, okay, the jargons where we start saying, uh, I mean, everyone loves this thing, API, endpoints. Uh, I think that's Splunk, right? Uh, okay, Splunk, okay, this thing. That, I don't know. People are so proud about this, all these keywords. Okay, Splunk, API, Automation, Postman. Well, Postman, okay. I mean, it doesn't take much time to learn that, okay. If you want to start off, okay, in 30 minutes, okay, you can start off. Because there are so many API endpoint websites as well, the free ones, you can experiment with them. But we don't do that. We just go ahead, we do it in such a shallow way, I'll tell you. Because the developer says, you know what, developer instructions. Uh, when I think this was 10 years back, the developer used to tell me, Santosh, you need to uh, 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 use the postman this way for this endpoint, and you need to see the response this way. Okay. Then I asked the developer, I think that's my work, right? So I will tell you what's wrong or what's right there. So why are you uh, injecting these instructions into my brain and making me? dumb and and there are there are always people uh, who think that they are smart the developer actually had uh, i mean very bad uh, or uh, very low meaning for a tester okay so that's why he was like okay i'm the king here or the queen or whatever on the higher authority uh, that i'm going to tell you and you just follow this so okay i'm sorry what was the subject by the way Automation, right? Rat face. Okay, cool, <laughs> perfect. I got lost. So I think automation uh, can help your testing because some part you can automate and some part you can test. If I want to test an API, I would automate some part of it. But some people come and say, okay, we need full automation. Everything has to be automated. Well, you can automate tiny parts of it, but you need to keep revisiting your automation code. No one does that. Once it's finished, you jump to the next project and no one even turns back because turning back is considered as a taboo, right? No one turns back, okay, keep looking forward. So I think that, okay, it's, it's not about, there's no race in the first place. There's no race in the first place. You got to be a kid, a child who is always happy to learn something. And the end of your life, you will have a smile when you're on the deathbed. That's all. Yeah. Or else, okay, yeah, you will cry even then because you will have a rat race. Yeah. Those are some very wonderful points. Well, for me, automation is uh, the culmination of all sorts of cognitive biases that you can think of. There is this cognitive bias codex, which has 188 cognitive biases uh, listed in it. And almost all of them, we, you will see driving towards this automation uh, race. And my favorite among them all is uh, what I, what they call as the bandwagon effect. Well, so there is a bandwagon. Everybody wants to hop on that. Why? Because it's nice, because it's fancy, because they think that it pays more. Uh, it, it, you know, people think, ah, this is, this is nice. This is cool. The feeling of, being cool in the society and being able to do do exactly this well that's that's what automation is doing but you guys are absolutely right on that one but that brings me to another question which is almost on the same lines so when people start automating 
everybody is doing UI testing. It's Selenium everywhere or alternatives to Selenium everywhere. Everybody is talking about UI test. Nobody is talking about testing at a deep, different layer. And most importantly, especially because the Santosh is on the show, who will talk about non-functional tests? What happened to performance? What happened to security? Who will talk about those? What are your thoughts, gentlemen, starting with Santosh this time? All right. OK, thank you. Uh, I, I, I was really feeling bad that I'm not the first here. So Ajay is always taking the first position. So uh, thank his name you, starts with A, so uh, you know, you can't, we can't help it there. Uh, well, I, I'm just trying. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing. What was the question? The question was that you said something about non-functional, right? The question was that there is too much focus on UI testing, even when yeah. people start doing automation. Mm -hmm. Why UI? Why not something deeper than UI? What about the non-functional tests? Why because only it's functional boring. testing? It's boring, Rajesh. People don't like boring things, all right? I'm telling this with the hashtag sarcasm again, OK? It's very boring because the UI, OK, you just go there. OK, my nephew is there, OK, using the mouse. It's, it's, so, it's so beautiful, right? So a click sound in the ears when you click the mouse or you tap on it, it's beautiful. And the reason why it's boring on the other side, non-functional, first of all, it's not non-functional. That was the reason why I asked you the question again, because the question framing itself, what do you mean non-functional? Okay, someone hacks your bank account or you say, oh, well, that was a non-functional testing, it's fine. You're not gonna say that. Or even, I mean, some person told me this in one of the biggest companies, uh, he told me, well, you know what, okay, what will they do with the address in an in a e-commerce website? Okay, if someone hacks into it, Oh, that's just a phone number, man. Okay, what would they do with it? Then I asked that person, the uh, developer, then why the beep? All right, are you uh, providing a login and authentication? Just leave it. Okay, just upload it on eBay or uh, other websites. And that person was like, no, 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 it's in a requirement. Bloody hell. Okay, when people will start using their brain and asking questions, okay. In, uh, why is it required in the first place? And we seldom do this, whatever, non-functional testing. I hate that name, by the way. And uh, what is a functional testing for a uh, security product now? What is a functional testing for a security product? It's still security, but you call, now, call it as functional now because uh, the intention of that product itself is to secure something, right? So these jargons keep changing. Doesn't matter what we call it, okay? Functional testing, security testing, because it makes our lives easier. Saying, oh, well, we, have, we are done with functional testing because it makes you feel happy. New milestone reached. But what value are you adding and how to add value is the first question that people need to ask themselves or the team members in the project, how would we define value? If we cannot define that for a specific project, I think we are just barking at the wrong tree or just walking in a pathway which is decided by other person, keep going on. And performance, you, I don't even, I don't even understand why are we talking about this even today? Okay, why is it required? Why is it not required? Would you be okay if someone hacks into your personal account and takes pictures, which are your private pictures, right? Someone uh, and someone blackmailing you. You would say, I don't care. Well, it hasn't happened yet. That's why you don't care, all right? Because there are many malicious hackers, okay? They are crazy about it. And when they hit you at a place where it pains a lot, so you are like, oh my God, this happened, I did not even imagine. Well, they couldn't have imagined because it did not happen that way before three years or one year or one month. You are, I mean, people, the, the ego of the people is very much easier in security. Uh, they say that, well, we are using that framework. Okay. 
Well, security doesn't work with, or anything, even functional as well, doesn't work with the frameworks. Doesn't matter what kind of automation code you are writing, what kind of testing you are doing. And many people, okay, I, I'm not sure, okay, how many people can answer this question here uh, uh, in the audience. I have been still asking this, okay? I asked this even before, I think it's been a decade. You will be still doubtful, and I'm 100% that people haven't really uh, known about the email address length. Even today, it's so much confusion because you you did not even go to Stack Overflow. What's the email address length? Can someone really be confident? And when I say, can someone really be confident? If your answer is wrong, okay, you'll be dead. Who is going to answer this now? I'm not sure, okay, if someone is going to answer in the audience section because we don't know. We haven't invested more time. And how many domain names are there? We just think about dot, uh, .com, .net, .org because they are the top level domain names, the commercial ones, uh, and .edu for the education, but .museum, dot maybe uh, there are so many nowadays, dot .home as well, I guess, dot .tech. And why do we say that the maximum email address length is 128 characters. Someone told me that it's 128. Someone told me it's 255. Someone told me it's 512, whatever those multiples, the uh, multiples of two to the power of eight or whatever they are. But you know why they told me that? Because their application does that. They trust their application so much that the whole world should work by their way. And there is one more comment. Google does it. Well, Google is not a god, come on. Or Microsoft, they also have bugs for the beep sake, okay? They also have bugs. And why are we relying on these people rather than relying on W3C? And many people don't know what is W3C, World Wide Web Consortium, who set the standard, okay, you have a lot of documentation there and it's so beautiful and no one does that. And performance, okay. Performance is always about JMeter or using some other tool. That's not performance. Using a tool and then calling it as a performance, is, that's not performance, okay. I can show you the numbers which will tell you, oh, performance-wise, this application is really great. But I, I think we are just behind the tools uh, uh, to, to put them in our resume or our CV and show off on social media. That's all we do. We are on social media because we fear, oh, maybe tomorrow I will not have a job. That's all, nothing else. The fear will stop you from learning more, deeper. And for me, okay, I'm, I'm really open about this. Well, I started a company, okay. Then I started one more company. Then I thought, okay, now enough of my company thing. Okay, then now, uh, now I want to be independent. And many people feel scared to open up. And first of all, why should I open up? It's not your business to get into my territory. I can do anything I want, but our society is not like that. You know what? It, it happens in the IT industry as well. It happens in uh, your neighbors, with the neighbors as well. Are aisa hua? Okay, you did, that happened that way? Oh my God. Bloody hell, why are we so much glamorizing this uh, world with it has to be this way and where is life lost someone told me that in search of god we lost diamond right uh, so my thing is we lost life in in between all this we don't even understand why are we doing something every day we are not happy but then we go to well, some mystic uh, people to ask our problem to them like ajay says uh, he's the CEO of his life, okay? So he's an expert. So he gives advice to himself, all right? So that's what I heard from him before as well. So why should he ask someone else? He needs to ask himself. I, I hope I'm, I'm, I'm right, Ajay, uh, because your uh, physiological expressions are like, okay, you're going to beat me later. I'm sorry. So, uh, so I think the security, it had to happen a long time back. It did not happen, whether fortunately or unfortunately, and people are picking it up now. Tomorrow, 
there will be something else that will come up and we'll be still the same people. It will take 20 years to do something. And tell me this thing, nowadays on the POS, uh, the point of sale device in the sh uh, supermarkets or anything, have you seen a touch screen, right? A touch screen where the numbers get kind of uh, randomized for the next transaction. So it's not zero in that position, it's nine or one or two. So there is scrambling on the UI and it's a touch screen. I wrote an article in 2011, it took 10 years for people to do that. Now I have been seeing this POS at the point of sale. When I wrote this article for the, uh, I think Testing Circus magazine, that's when this happened and now I'm seeing that. And that's the same case with any profession, be it developer, be it tester. I mean, why is it that, okay, we need to use the symbols like greater than or lesser than, and there are two variables, okay, which is test development. Development. I mean, whatever, coding, okay. Why are we doing that? How does it help us? It doesn't help anyone, either the developer, I mean, neither the developers or testers or, or the company or anything else. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, well, that's, I mean, I that's, that's quite what's comprehensive uh, perspective, Santosh. Uh, let's let's uh, hear it from Ajay. Uh, Ajay oh, yeah. Has... Okay. It was the second one, right? I'm sorry, Ajay. Yeah, yeah. As, <laughs> as he confused me Ajay. by giving me the first position. No, Ajay, Ajay, Ajay was um, listening to you very carefully. Uh, with a straight face, I don't know how he does that. That's 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 something that I have to learn how how he does that because suddenly if I hear something which is so my expression would change, but his expressions don't change. So you don't know what he's actually thinking. But uh, Ajay, you can share what you have been thinking. What are your thoughts? It's, a, it, it's always zeros or one with him. So with I mean the same thing with me as well. So either he would be thinking uh, very good or he's thinking like, why are we even discussing this? <laughs> or maybe I could be playing chess. Sorry? Ah. <laughs> or maybe I could be playing chess. All right, perfect. <laughs> yeah, so automation at UI versus automation at different layers. Uh, one question, ask yourself, uh, why are you automating? Right. Uh, if the question, uh, if the answer to the question, why are you automating is clear, then you will then focus on where to automate. If you are not clear on why are you automating, you would automate wherever you are asked to automate. Right. If you are, if you are clear about the answer of answer for the question, why are you automating? You would then ask where to automate so that I can get that particular goal achieved or that question answered, or I can get that info information, right? Uh, so, you know, even before you get on to automation, ask yourself the question, why are you automating, right? Uh, and then uh, ask yourself the question, where if I automate, will I get the max returns for the cost? Cost could be the tool, cost could be the time, cost could be uh, the effort, all of that, right? Now. Once that is clear, then uh, you don't need anyone to help you answer the question where to automate, right? Should it be on UI layer? Should it be on maybe the API or should it be at, you know, uh, unit testing level, you know, that function, that module, right? So at that class level, where do you want that automate, right? Uh, so without getting the answer to why are you automating, uh, don't spend time, you know, on these questions of where to automate, right? First understand why are you automating? Why are you automating? There is a sub question also. Do you need to automate? No. As I told in the last chatter box, are you automating because you can automate or are you automating because you need to automate? There is a big difference. Power bank example, you remember? Just because no. I have a power bank, you shouldn't charge your phone using power bank. Power bank has its purpose. Where you, you need to use power bank, use there. Not just because you have a water bottle, you shouldn't drink water. If you need to drink water, you should drink. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really thirsty. <laughs> yeah, you can drink water from a glass. Go to, go, go to the fridge or 
you know just from a glass you don't have to always drink using water bottle you know so <laughs> I that's, keep that in mind. That, yeah, that, that was a that 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 was a good one. Uh, well, uh, well, I I also have a take on this this particular question. You know, everybody when they start automating, um, one of the easiest entry points. Okay, and this is this is just a perception. Perception is that for for automation, you know, people people think that oh, you have to automate, so you have to convert some test cases into test scripts and that is what automation is for most people for a lot of people and uh, that will make those test cases or test scripts run faster than what humans would do it so it is faster than my favorite word manual testing well so uh, that's why they want to do it that is that is uh, become a big, huge perception and ui is the best entry point for for a lot of people and people are still stuck doing the same thing like ajay said people have not looked beyond that at all whether it can be done at an api level whether it can be done at a lower level okay people have not and, and, and you know understood and most importantly the use cases for automation have never been understood like ajay responded in the very first question with what uh, aspects of of your testing can be automated is it just the test that you're talking about or is it something else right from capturing requirements to to reporting there are a lot of things you can automate anywhere you see an opportunity of reducing your effort you can use automation but people are like oh i have to convert x number of manual test cases into y number of uh, you know automation test scripts so that they can be run in you know whatever 5 5 seconds 10 seconds whatever and what i care about is an all green jenkins report in the night it will run i see a fancy jenkins report and my manager says oh if the report is green then it is a shippable product really so brijesh sorry to cut you off uh, santosh uh, jugalwandi 10 play, 10 reasons why a green jenkins report might not be actually green first one missing test your chance uh i mean i'm so confused with the question itself okay what was the question again please a green a green jenkins yeah. report 100% green jenkins report why it might not be actually 100% first reason missing test if you don't have the test itself then obviously it will be yeah. green okay um, yeah um, lack of knowledge lack of knowledge to identify a bug as a bug right uh incorrect assertions uh they don't understand testing don't understand testing itself so if there is a bug on the cart menu and you are testing on the search menu you will never get the bug okay uh then uh, a green report is the reporting itself is not working and then you are yeah. looking at the old reports as the newer report itself okay your chance right because the rgb value of the color which was given to that report was incorrect yeah oh because uh, you know the tester copy pasted if pass green if red and then you know someone called saying hey look uh, and then they forgot to update so everything is green right okay uh, next one would be the report functionality itself is incorrect suppose there are 108 tests it stopped at 105 tests so it had the test it had the failure but it did not complete in the report it did not show in the report yes cool <laughs> so uh, yeah, i was, I was thinking good. about okay how we could hack the reporting tool itself and show green or super green as well and oh, if someone reporting tool yeah uh, and uh, you mentioned something before this point what was that where i laughed for that okay something what was the previous point before i and before me 105 108 it wow. never had to test itself that test was not included in the report bugs in the report all of that yes there are so many things because the developer who created a reporting tool okay that person 
could be a rogue insider or else the person wanted to reduce their job because we did not even test the reporting tool. We just said, okay, there is a fantastic reporting tool. Okay, we just need to generate this, all this colorful, beautiful things, just like the Holy Festival and uh, play with the colors. It, the same thing goes with the Excel sheet. You know, I have this funny uh, thing about Excel sheets. The more colorful you make, okay, your salaries get more colorful. So that's what I have be, been saying from last 10 years. And manager uh, who told, okay, I'm sorry, I think I'm going out of the subject. Okay. The next reason is uh, uh, lack of knowledge happened and then probably well, oh, can I don't understand why it's green in the first place? Why something was considered as a pass or fail, like people call it as, right? So why did it do it? And what is pass actually? And what does green mean for the first time? Can I, can, so can, can can I end this one with, with, with one of mine, uh, with your permission? Uh, it is because the report was config or the tool was configured to generate a green report because the manager wanted to see an all green report okay so this this happens quite a lot actually okay an all yeah. green test to and and, and 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 in 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 certain uh, communities or in certain uh, i have come across this term called test to pass oh you don't have to test you have to test to pass you know so so <laughs> it's like okay you you don't do it you do it for the heck of it yeah you know Okay, I would like to move to the next question. And then after that, maybe we go to some audience questions. So uh, in fact, in fact, I've got a couple more. Um, do you think, according to you, in the last decade, testing has really evolved? And, uh, you know, are we testing differently compared to what we were? 10 years ago. Santosh, nodding your head already. No. A big no for this because the things are same. I don't know how a bigger company's MNCs, they get a bigger projects. And you, I think, okay, if you're joining a bigger company, you are just uh, uh, destroying your learning career. Okay. So you're, you're just there and they keep sending you a paycheck every month. And that's so comfortable. Because your life is set, right? Well, it's not set, but you, from your perspective, you are, you are seeing that my life is set. How would it be set, all right? Okay, if you are not learning. And someday, okay, the recession comes over, okay, or else they have to fire many people, they need to give a pink slip, and you are going to be them. And then you want to learn all of a sudden. Then you want to go to different workshops. And then you want to... Uh, spice up your profile saying that i know this i know that but i don't i don't think so nothing what has changed maybe there are some people who would say uh santosh i want to learn security all right i want to learn the automation stuff i want to learn testing or as for instance uh, there was i think uh Brijesh, someone disagrees with you okay i'm sorry man okay he also says sorry uh, he doesn't agree with you. Automation is only for uh, repetitive tasks. Is it? That's the thing that you said or uh, Shahzad Adil Sheikh is saying that? Uh, automation is only done for repetitive tasks. Is it your point or his no, point? It, it okay, his it point. was not your point. It's not only for repetitive tasks, okay? So we always think automation is only for whatever we are repeating, not necessarily. There, there could be, for instance, okay, there could be some bugs wherein you have to automate in a very quicker fashion. Uh, you have to keep pinging it just like your DOS attack, denial of service attacks, and then see how is the application going to behave, right? So it's not something that you have to do it because uh, next month, maybe my developer is releasing so many features and that's why I need to run. We need to get out of that mindset where we are saying repeating it only during a specific interval. It's, that's not automation, first thing. Automation is not for repetitive tasks or testing. 
However, it's one of the reasons, but not complete uh, definition of automation. There are so many things where you can use the automation. For instance, let me say this. Let's say the server uh, will respond only in first few milliseconds, all right? And when you are clicking on a button one and then clicking on button two, you're not fast to do those clicks. That's, that's also one of the areas where you use automation to quickly click on it or send the request. And then the server is going to say unknown error and is going to reveal all the stack trace, okay, which could be uh, sensitive information. And it can be used wherever the context matters. I won't say that, okay, it is used for only these purposes because I don't want to kill the creativity of people by saying that automation means this. If I, if I, could, I could tell a kid, a child, you know what? Uh, humans are, <laughs> I'm sorry, okay, I just got a different keyword, but I'm taking it back. So humans are supposed to do this. If I say that, the kid is going to think only that all his life or her life or their life and not enjoy the specific thing, which is life itself. And that's the things uh, happen, happening with, I think it happens even with the developers as well. It's not just testing. Well, okay, not, I, 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 not, I will have to yeah. cut you off here because uh, that was a question I, I wanted to ask you a little later, but you took that question. Uh, oh, just okay. to bring you back to the original question, <laughs> it okay, was about uh, you know whether testing has evolved, and uh, your view is that we are still testing the same way that we were doing ten years ago. My short answer so, is no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Ajay, yes or no? Have we evolved? We are, we are doing the same mistakes uh, in a different environment. We were doing that mistake in say using silk tool. Now we are doing it with Selenium. Uh, if we were doing a mistake on a desktop application, now we are doing it on uh, you know IoT or mobile apps. So the mistakes are same, and uh, which is okay to some extent. At the same time, uh, there is information overload also. Which is, see, when when I was starting testing and I wanted to learn more about testing, I had to really struggle to find information about what other testers would write, have written and all that. Now I can get that easily, but then I get so many of them that I don't know what to read and what not to read. Right? So has testing evolved? Has, has there been a different way of testing? Yes, in some parts, in some places, yes. In some places, the same. If you still go to many communities on Facebook, on LinkedIn, you are still asked the question, what is the difference between smoke and sanity? Uh, give me a test case template. Give me a bug template. Uh, maybe now uh, they have added the word automation along with that. Give me a template for automation framework. Right. So the, the core problems are same. Uh, many people are not thinking. Many people don't have the right guidance and uh, they are doing the same mistakes, right? So it's unfortunate, uh, but then uh, we will soon overcome that one day. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, I have a point, yeah. The, the thing here is uh, we rely on hope, okay? So I have been relying on hope for a long time now. And people say, okay, that's why we call it as a hope, right? to do something, to change something, maybe the face of the industry changes. Be, it could be any industry itself. Now, someone came to me a long time back, okay, or even, I think they do it even now as well, today, I mean. So where someone said, Santosh, uh, I'm an automation engineer. I could automate CAPTCHA. No worries, man, okay, can uh, automate CAPTCHA, take this. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And he was like, yeah, I could automate it. But finally, I don't see it as a bug, okay, in the bug reporting tool. And then I went to him and I said, okay, I mean, why didn't you report that bug then? He said, okay, no, 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 I'm, I'm making your job easier. So the first thing is identification of the bug itself was a big failure. 
the person who was so passionate about automation, automating everything, the person also ended up doing capture automation. And mm -hmm. that, uh, that was a disaster because that's a security bug in the first place. Now, identification of the bug, how much do we know? And one of the certification uh, people, the biggest one, I know, okay, you're all, all thinking about the big guys. Okay, I'm not taking the name here. But what are, their website, they speak about security testing and they have a CAPTCHA in login form. Yes. They haven't changed it yet. Okay. But if you want to do some investigation, you, you are responsible for anything, whether you go to jail or you don't go to jail. Okay. It's up to you. What happened here is they are storing that CAPTCHA value on the client side. Who saves CAPTCHA value on the client side? They do. Uh, yes, they do. Yeah. So they're doing it already. And they are storing in the session cookie or it could be in the application tab. And most of us, we don't even navigate to uh, to look into the application session storage or web SQL or whatever different things our application supports. And we don't even investigate what is doing. Right. And we are just on the screen saying that, okay, I clicked here, I clicked there. Okay, everything is fine. I mean, my neighboring kid can do that. What has changed? Where is that uh, evidence base or uh, thing where you dig deeper and speak about a specific bug? Uh, because we don't even understand what's a bug, first of all. So many years, but we cannot identify several bugs. And we speak about all different courses because I take a course because it's good for my profile, that's all. And well, I hate it. That, that, that said, that said, uh, Santosh, um, I have I have a wonderful question for for both of you next. Okay, you t you spoke about career profiles and, and 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 courses and things like that. Let's look at some of the job descriptions around us. They are all full of automation, automation, automation. Tons and tons and tons of tools being asked from people. There have been cases such as uh, you know uh, recently there was something where. Uh, somebody was asked, uh, I think, 12 or 18 years of experience in Kubernetes when that is like uh, six or seven years old itself. The tool itself is six or seven years old and somebody was asked more experience than that. So it is it is that crazy that the job descriptions are so full of tools. Yeah. So it's there is so much of automation that there is very little focus on test craftsmanship. Nobody in the interviews, right from interviews, or or if you go to conferences, they're all about automation, automation, automation. You know, there, there are summits happening all around. There is too much focus on automation. Nobody's talking about the craft. Yeah. Do you see a problem? I see a great problem there. I'll go first, Ajay. So, <laughs> so you can have a great thinking time there because I know you're thinking, which is great. So. Now let's consider the farming business itself, okay? Now, people are growing different trees or plants and it's giving fruits, okay? But what's happening behind the scenes is we are spoiling the soil by the fertilizers, chemicals, and everything. We are, we, what we are doing is for the profits, we are doing it, but there's a big problem which we do not see as of today. And uh, the automation thing, okay, going on. Uh, I mean, that's cool because we have to make progress because automation is great, right? Okay, that's why people have a lot of job profiles only with that. And people so sometimes, okay, they don't know about the cash or they don't know about the different uh, the clients' and validations, how they work, service and validations, and what happens in the firewall in the first place. They don't even know that because they say I'm a manual tester only on the front end. I mean, who stopped you? Who stopped you to go? I mean, first of all, no one can stop me to get into their applications and I don't work for their company. And you work in that specific company and then you say, okay, no, 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 I'm a manual tester. I work only with this. Now, uh, that automation, uh, I, I saw one question here uh, again by Mr. Shahjad. Adil Sheikh, yeah. Don't because get distracted by that question. Uh, no need of it. For example, like case one showing value on UI, 
which is user interface, is matching with the backend database. You can do it. You can automate, okay, if you, if you need to see something on the UI, and you can match that with the backend database. That automation can be done. Uh, I, I don't see a reason why we cannot do it here. Uh, so we, our education system itself is not even to the average mark, is what I feel. And automation, everyone running behind it because everyone is proud about it. I don't know what makes them proud about automation because to me, it's taking something and achieving a task. It could be anything. And does it make sense to write code for this uh, automation? I mean, it's the same thing with a car. Should I drive faster or should I drive slower? Or should I not drive at all, right? Should I do automation or should I write uh, this automation code, or uh, maybe I should not write this code and invest more of my time in whatever people call exploratory testing. Now, James also speaks about, okay, testing by itself is exploratory. Now we are running because it, it's very flashy to uh, put our designation on LinkedIn saying exploratory tester, right? We do, we love it. But do, do you even ask yourself, are you doing exploration in the first place? Or you want to just lure some people to look into your profile and do it because I see them a lot. I see them a lot. Yeah. So you were okay. So, I forgot, man. Okay, I got lost. <laughs> so automation. Okay. You know what? For the first thing, if you want to do good, is let's not speak about it, whether automation or testing. The moment we it's just like a gender equality. So the more we are speaking about it. We are being conscious about it all the time. From last 10 years, I've been seeing the same thing, automation. Okay, testing. Bloody hell, what are we doing in life? I mean, how how can we look look into the mirror by ourselves? In, I mean, every morning or okay, whenever one looks into the mirror, because I don't look in into the mirror. So I'm, I'm just... Yeah, the mirror something. looks at you. The, the mirror looks at you. <laughs> know, probably, yeah. <laughs> Well, Ajay, so, what do you think? Automation everywhere. No test craftsmanship being spoken about. Hold on. Automation everywhere. There is a company name. Be careful, OK? Yeah, yeah. So don't don't run. <laughs> no, they are automation anywhere. So. See, you told it. That's a mistake you did, Rajesh. <laughs> OK, right. Uh, so test craftsmanship is not spoken about. What stops each one of us from speaking about it? Uh, because we don't practice. We think, uh, oh, I, I know only so much. Who will listen to me? Someone who is uh, who needs that message, you never know. Uh, no one knows your own story. So talk about it. Practice testing and demonstrate that practice. Record that and put it on YouTube. I have done that check my YouTube channel, you will find videos on that. Uh, I wanted to learn about automation. I paired up with Lavanya and then I asked questions to her. Uh, I get answers. She gets a better way to present the things. So we both are learning, right? So automation is everywhere. Yeah, let it be there. Uh, what's the problem? I asked, <laughs> okay. Uh, test craftsmanship is not there, I'll put it there wherever you want it to be there, right? Um, don't confuse job with career. Job is like one part of your life. Career is a long-term uh, thing. So if you pay attention to the long-term thing, you know, these things will come and go. That's okay, right? So um, focus on strengthening your opportunities for the career, not for a specific job, right? See, no code automation on its way, it's fine. Let it come. You know, we'll find bugs there also. We'll have debates there also. That's fine. I don't know. Somehow I'm feeling, you know, all calm, composed kind of thing for answering all these questions. Okay. So uh, let's, let's, let's look at some of the audience questions now. And let's see if we can get some views on this. Uh, this one from Tara Shankar, he says, I do visual testing using Cypress to catch any visual differences. 
many times icons get distorted menu items etc uh, so while i do feature testing i got missed due to skewed mind is this right so uh, if i read this question correctly uh, while he's trying to do some sort of automation he has a feeling that maybe he has a distracted mind and that's why he may be missing something so is this thing right Santosh. Uh, Ajay, you go ahead this time because I don't want to give you a time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I do visual testing using Cypress to catch any visual differences. Many times I can get distorted menu items, etc. So while doing feature testing, it got missed due to skew mine. Is this right? Uh, right for what? You missing it is right or the automation finding it is right or what is right, what is wrong? I don't know. Uh, uh. So, uh, Ajay, my interpretation is uh, what he's probably asking that is it okay to to sort of uh, certain oh, miss it during that... feature testing? Oh yes, yeah. of course it is okay to miss because uh, there are there are only few things you could focus on. Uh, right. For example, right now, no one is focusing on the second part of the clock on your computer because you are not looking at it, right? Because you are focusing on these three faces, right? So you can focus on only X number of things. Now you decide what are those X things to focus on, right? Uh, the X things can change. You want to focus on the visual differences, go focus on it. Then you will find more bugs on there, right? Uh, if you want to improve your skill towards highlighting those small differences, play the game called uh, can't unsee dot space. Uh, let me go ahead here and then uh, paste it. Can't unsee dot space. Paste this uh, in your uh, browser and then you know you'll be you can practice it for like fifteen minutes after the show. Okay, uh, is this the right approach, Tara? It depends on what you want to achieve, right? So if it helps you achieve, yes, it is right. If it doesn't, it's not simple. And don't complicate so. Santosh, you want to take this question? Dev thinks that testers are only here for testing login page. So what value are we adding to the company? No, the question was different about uh, what Ajay answered was, uh, that was a okay. different question. Brijesh, what are you doing, man? Okay, so yeah. you want to answer that question as well? Okay. The Cypress okay. one, right? Yeah, 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 sure. I yeah, love yeah. that. Okay. Okay. The visual testing, okay, it all started recently when people started speaking about it. Visual testing, okay, we use this tool, okay, I don't want to name the tool vendor here. But visual testing became so famous. And what is visual testing? First of all, you're not testing, you're checking there. If you are writing the automation code, let's say you are checking if this selector name, CSS selector name, of course you are doing some kind of test, okay, through your code. But you know, the right thing, what I did when, I, when it was 10 years back is I use this support tables. So you can use a CSS uh, tables as well. You can use uh, HTML. Uh, uh, tags, compatibility table as well. Now, if you go to Quirks mode, uh, I used to use that uh, website, Q-U-I-R-K-S-M-O-D-E, right? So that is a website uh, and .org. So wherein I used that table and then all I did was using my spreadsheet. So whenever I go to the CSS file, because you can find the CSS file in your client side code and it lists all the CSS locations. Now, this table, whatever compatibility table that I'm using, has a red mark, just like how we have green in uh, the reporting tool. Now, all I consider is those red marks, okay? Because that's a compatibility table. Now, I take all those red selected names or CSS, uh, whatever uh, keywords they have, and then compare with the CSS code in the application. Now that will tell me, hey, you are using this specific selector or 
or uh, pro probably you are using uh, this keyword here based on different languages, programming languages. And you should not use it because it's not compatible with this browser, X, Y, Z, all right? So then I get to know, oh, maybe I need to write a plan B code because identify the browser and then say, I need to display something else on the user interface, the visual testing. But, but that was around 10 years back. Now Cypress came now, right? Okay, it was, I have been hearing it uh, for last few years only, but what happened then versus now? Because maybe, Maybe uh, the HRs are asking for that because you need to know, but it's very simple. If you start from the grassroots, you need to understand the software. Then you need to say, okay, which wires I need to use and they have to co be compatible with it. That's when you choose something rather than saying, okay, I will use Selenium, I'm a Selenium. It, it's not that you just, you, probably you can be a polyglot uh, uh, programmer or a coder for the automation, who will uh, do whatever is required. And some people will say, oh, well, I want to write code in Python or someone said Java, uh, because someone was asking about that. It's, it's so uh, difficult because they have to keep learning Java, Python and all those things. Now, to do that, it's, it's, not, it's not a difficult job because even developers have different roles, all right? So they have Java, they have, how is it different from the developers? Because if a company is working on a Python, of course they will ask for the Python. They cannot ask for, uh, I need to use Java, all right? But if you understand the foundation, right? Be it programming or uh, concepts or testing itself, you can probably understand that you can move from one framework to another framework quite easily with a consistent practice you can become better at it. But no, the moment someone says, okay, some other programming language, we get scared because we don't understand how the code works. We know how to help my manager smile. That's all. Because, because they're, I mean, <laughs> of course, okay, the, the, he gives the paycheck or the HRs. Yeah. So visual testing, okay, you can do it anytime. Okay. I did it before 10 years just by using the compatibility tables. And why are we speaking about it now is the question. And one of the biggest companies, services space companies, they, they charge some companies, uh, I mean, I think they were airlines companies, to do this cross-browser testing. So much of money, bloody hell, okay, there is too much of money on this planet, okay, capture it, okay. Uh, the problem is they were charging for every person, every tester work. They have to keep opening the different browsers and keep seeing it because they love it, right? Because good money and it's easy, right? Because uh, it's not easy. It's very challenging to open a browser, right? So you click on the browser, okay, then open a website and then say, okay, this is also same here. This is also same here. Okay, done. What? And they were charging page by page basis, damn it. And what I did was, okay, take this code, okay, run it, okay, then they go, and I said, okay, don't even give me any money, it's fine. So you just use it. And they, they still use that code even now, saying that uh, uh, how the CSS compatibility or the HTML compatibility with the specific browsers work. And uh, one of the website name I would like to highlight is, can I use .com? Can I use? Dot com. So you go there, enter a specific CSS uh, keyword or selector, and it will tell you whether it works on this browser or doesn't. So I think, okay, it's, it's all you need to do is uh, the groundwork is already done by these people uh, who are giving the compatibility tables. All you need to do is, okay, look into your CSS code or write an automation. And many people wear this Selenium folks are, I mean, I don't want to take that a specific name here, but the automation framework, because that's famous now, people have lost it, I'll tell you. Now, they have the skills to write an automation code, but they don't have a skill to generate an idea in their brain saying that I can use this even with the CSS as well, the code. 
If it doesn't work, then how about using Python? How long does it take uh, to learn to do some, I mean, adjust some wires and then say, okay, go here and check because there are so many libraries that you have. What matters is an idea and not the tool that you use. Yeah. Okay, uh, in the interest of time, we have 10 minutes remaining on the clock, okay? Um, so in the interest of time, let's take one last question. And this was the one that I was trying to highlight earlier. So how do we add a value to a company as testers? Ajay. How do we add value? Uh, find the problem the testing is trying to solve and then solve it. Uh, testers are like the uh, headlights of a vehicle. So you are the headlights of the project. So highlight things where it is not going how it should go highlight risks highlight the blind spots highlight the okay let me try a to z okay. uh, highlight uh, the places where people are not aware highlight the places where business is uh, affected highlight the places where customers are not might lose out Highlight the places where data is misused. Highlight the places where people are spending energy, but they should not be spending. Highlight the places where things could fail, if, but then uh, no one is paying attention to. Highlight the places where, uh, I don't know a word for G. Highlight the places where, uh, okay, leave it. Highlight the places where uh, H, too much of, uh, say, too much of process is going on, but then uh, it is not helpful, right? Highlight the places where people are not thinking beyond their team. They are not collaborating. Highlight the places where people think no one would do it as a joke, but then things could happen. Uh, who would have thought that the ship would get stuck in that canal, right? But it happened, right? So highlight the places where uh, people are uh, spending a lot of money. Right. So as a tester, highlight, talk to them, but you don't take the decision. You are not the gatekeeper. Right. So yeah. highlight, convince, mention in passing and go with the data. Ask questions like a child, uh, investigate like an investigator, defend like a lawyer, think like a philosopher. You will do good. Santosh. Right. So How I'm you just add value? Now, now, I would like to, I'm just reading the question to analyze what is it about. Now, uh, Jugal Patil asked this question. Okay, Dev thinks that testers are only here for testing login page. Uh, did they tell you or it's our assumption is the first question. But even if they said something, why are you asking this question? If you are already confident about yourself, because you say, but we all know who we are. Uh, well, I don't know about that because uh, we are using this word called as all. I don't. I cannot speak for everyone. All right. Actually, uh, I mean, who we are actually and what value we are adding to the company. But the first question we need to ask ourselves is, am I adding value to myself rather than adding to the company? But if we are just lost with comparison with the developers, can they think this? Why are we running behind them? But do you think whatever neighbors are thinking about it, you just let it go. But why are we holding on to this part saying, Dev, if you are really passionate, I don't think so. You should uh, worry about the stone pelters, right? Okay, they, they are throwing stones at you. And and we don't we should, we should not think about, oh, testers are great. Okay, well, I said this to developer. Why are we creating this nonsense enmity, right? There are so many enemies in the industry. I think nothing has changed. Before we used to have wars between the kings now and queens. Now we have the wars between testing, development, and all these things. Someone has to be better. Why are we, I mean, we need not be better because the customer is going for a toss and people, the users are going for a toss. So let's put humanity at the center rather than putting, uh, oh, well, they think like this. But it, and I think that log to kuch kahenge, right? So that's, that's the thing, okay, people will keep saying something, but how are you adding value to your life? Because at the end of the day, you won't even think about the company, I'll tell you. Did you feel happy 
of what you are doing, then you think about the value addition to the company and that can happen only through your learning, nothing else. Fair point. That's it. Wonderfully summarized. I think you guys uh, have done really well. Um, I, I couldn't have had a better uh, start to this uh, testing debate. This was more like a, a discussion than like a debate, but well done, guys. And I think I, I did pretty well in controlling my instincts of, uh, of being Mr. AG on the show because he's quite popular for, for, for you know, asking questions and then answering those by himself. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I've, I've managed it pretty well. Well, um, so I want to thank the audience for, for, for the kind of discussions that, that they've had. The audience can obviously reach out to Santosh and Ajay on their social media handles. Uh, I will list them in the description of this video. If I haven't done so already, you can reach out to them on LinkedIn as well as on Twitter. And I can tell you that they will respond 100%. Also, they can be reached out through the test chat uh, community. Well, one thing that I wanted to highlight before ending the show is that both these gentlemen have their birthdays coming up. Exactly. Are on the other side of the weekend. So on Monday, the 5th of April is Ajay's birthday. So don't forget to wish him. And on 6th of April is Satosh's birthday. So don't forget to wish him either. Well, on on everybody's behalf, I would like to wish both of you a very happy birthday in advance so that you can continue the celebrations till your birthdays and beyond. So have a lot of fun. You know, uh, you guys have been doing so much for the testing community, for the testers, for everybody. So more power to you guys. And, uh, you know, uh, always uh, make sure that we are a part of your parties that you are having in your lives. <laughs> that's all That's all I would wish for. Yes, Santosh, yes, Bridges, and here we are. Party is going. So, yeah, I would like to say something uh, emotionally as well here uh, in terms of testing, okay, the testers itself. You need to take that one step. There are many people to help you out there. The only thing uh, you have to let go of your baggage and see, okay, what you can do. Even when you are in your fifties, okay. Uh, for instance, the KFC founder, right? Okay, when he was sixties, okay, he started that or whatever. So you can learn any day, anytime. And you have to take that first step. And sometimes we start thinking that uh, probably it's an imposter syndrome. That's why I'm not. But how do you know it's an, I mean, imposter syndrome? Okay. We haven't done diagnosis or anything, but you are thinking about yourself that I'm not cool, I'm not hot, or whatever different temperatures. All right. So, so I think it's the first step. Okay. You can learn any day. Okay. Even at the last day of, of your death. Uh, yes, you can do that. And Nike says it, but I don't think so. We are doing it. Just do it. All right. Just do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, Ajay, you wanted to make an announcement, I, I believe. Right. Um, so I'm launching one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching. And uh, you can go to testwithajay.com slash coaching. I somehow pasted the comment, but it is not appearing on... Uh, the stream yard. I'll do it again. I've done it now. Uh, please approve the comment. Right. So yeah, I'm launching one on one coaching. And if you say that you have come through this debate or the test chat, uh, you would get 50% uh, discount. Okay, so uh, if you think you need a coach, if you think you need someone to help you guide, uh, or uh, someone who can uh, solve your problems, uh, help you network with the right people, increase your efficiency, or help you realize your potential, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to me. We'll have it over the weekends, not during the weekends. Yep. 
Thank you. All Thank right. You. Awesome. Thank right. you. So I, much, uh, uh, sorry, no, 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 British. Just a moment. Yeah, sorry, yeah, man. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Because I also do, need to do some kind of marketing here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, go ahead. Okay. Your show, guys. So, uh, what I, I mean, I, I did that before as well, but I'm trying to highlight it here. So, if anyone wants to become a hacker, don't think about uh, the money part and then come to me because I know that, okay, you are running behind the money part, which is fair enough as well, but I cannot really work with you. But if you really want to understand the security or uh, hacking or anything, you can talk to me and all you can do is you can write to me on Twitter or LinkedIn and don't ask me for more discount, okay, because I just gave you 50% discount. Don't yeah, ask me for more discount 100% discount because I need to give you back money. Yeah, I need to pay you back. So it's 100% discount. Okay, as long as you want to really do something awesome for the security of the users. To me, the company is not there. To me, the users are there usually. I mean, mostly. So because I feel for them, and that's the emotional part. I feel for them because any any kind of crimes can happen with the hacking, which I have seen as well. And we take it very lightly. And we do, we just do it because I'm a security tester. I'm penetration tester and all that. But I think we need to put the humans at the center and uplift them rather than anything else. Cool. And and I hope you will write to me because most of them do not write to me. Uh, and I can have They're my scared beer. Of you, okay? Well, sorry, sure. they, they are scared. They are scared of uh, you, Santosh, because they fear that they might uh, reveal some information which you may use against them. So that's why I have already um, used used it. So they did not think about <laughs> it. They're fine. If they come to me, then I will help them, saying that okay, man, you need to safeguard your data. Yeah, fine. <laughs> well, uh, well, thank, thank you, Santosh. Thank you, Ajay. Uh, well. Um, there is something big that's coming up next week and watch out for the announcements uh, that are happening. There is a big announcement coming later today on uh, the test chat uh, social media channels on uh, my social media handles as well. Next weekend, uh, there is a big uh, ask me anything session coming up with with Santosh himself. So you will have um, uh, Santosh at your disposal for the full time. So you may come with whatever questions you have in your head and uh, then we can put santosh on the spot well on that note i want to uh, thank everyone for joining in thank you so much ajay it's always a pleasure to have you santosh you are a rock star you know that thank you so much uh, and the audience thank you for making this so wonderful i really love the interaction you guys are awesome hope to see you next time until next time namaste Thank you. Thank you.